Township Supervisor meeting for April 16th order. Please rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we're doing a video meeting again because of COVID-19. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please call the Township Building, 717-336-1720. Thank you. This meeting was advertised on extra paper. Since uh, the governor said this will end the stay home at the end of the month, our next meeting in May should be at normal time, normal place. Okay, first order of business, uh, we have an executive session Thursday, April 9th, 3 o'clock, for personal legal matters. Next the order of business, pass meeting minutes. Any additions or corrections? Maybe we should announce Mr. Carrasco couldn't be here today. He is on the phone here, though, uh, ready to uh, vote and give his input. Yep, I'm sorry, didn't put that. Yeah, thank you, Jack. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so if you hear hear his voice, he he's here in spirit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Alan, I I have one uh, minor correction on the uh, minutes. Yes. It's on page three of four. Um, all the way down at the bottom, almost to the last sentence there where it starts with green space open for people. If you go all the way to the end, it says, and send letters. It should be to the other park, mm -hmm. parks on township letterhead. Yes. And then I think well, the way we should word it, because of the way we said it, it should be recommending that they follow our guidance and mm -hmm. our lead. Because we had talked about them following our guidance and lead. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm Clarifies it a little bit. Clarifies it better. I think it makes okay. sense. Yeah. Good good catch. Uh, good catch. Any other additions or corrections? Okay. I'll make a motion that the minutes are approved with these corrections as presented. I'll second that. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion passed. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. Um, morning. Morning. Good morning, Chief. When I report, um, I can say that the call volume and the um, criminal activity has decreased, and we have found that um, after speaking to the other chiefs of police, Lancaster County seems to be the case in most municipalities uh, throughout the county and, and I'll be honest with you I believe is pretty much throughout the country that we have seen a decrease in the crime rate. Um, if you go out in the evening uh, you will notice that most people are abiding by the stay at home rule and uh, there's very little traffic on the road. Um, our officers are still out patrolling and still ready to answer any calls that are needed. A uh, few items. Uh, Officer Brandon Van Alstall has successfully completed his FTO training and is currently signed to night shift. Officer Logan High is currently in his seventh week of FTO training. And at this point, um, due to the school being um, closed, Officer Fisher is back in a patrol function probably until the beginning of August in reference to that. So. Um, that's what's going on uh, patrol wise. Uh, if you see if the parents or neighbors of a senior in the Cocalico School District uh, see a patrol car pull up, um, we are delivering signs for the school, a yard sign. Um, I should have brought one up, but I, I forgot it downstairs. Um, 
it's a normal size yard sign. The school district had them printed up, and it says, uh, you know, class of 2020. It has a Eagle on it. Uh, due to stay-at-home orders and uh, everything going on, the school district asked if we would participate in helping to place those in the yards of the seniors to recognize them since their seniors kind of been cut short. Uh, Sergeant Proge and I were out yesterday, delivered about 52 of them. Um, some of the patrol guys are going to do it in this, or tonight or this evening. So again, if people see a uh, patrol car pull up, it's probably not something bad. They're just delivering a sign to one of the seniors. I think there's a total of about 205 that they're doing. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, so the school district asked if we would help, and we said absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just something that we can do um, to kind of recognize those seniors. Scott Aki and I speak, um, if not daily, close to daily, in reference to any needs of the department. He was able to obtain some decontamination um, solution. Uh, we have a sprayer that he provided for us downstairs, so we are able to decontaminate um, areas that need to be. Um, the officer that was in self-quarantine due to a family member having a possible um, or being tested for COVID Negative, so that officer is back to work. So we're back to full strength right now. Good. Um, besides that, that's pretty much my report. Any questions of the chief? Gentlemen, I think we have Mr. Aki on the phone. Scott, are you there? I am here, yes. Uh, did you want to jump in and give some more report? Uh, sure, I can bring you up to date. Um, first of all, I think, I think uh, through this whole pandemic situation, as far as EMA is concerned, everybody's worked together really well. Everything's been uh, relatively smooth. Our, our case for the township has been very minimal, thank God. Um, I think we've probably had two or three positives throughout the, throughout the township. Two of those were definitely from uh, Faithful Living, which was the former colonial lodge. Um, and then several were at uh, Coverage Farms. I do believe uh, also four seasons might have just one or two. Um, but it seems like everything's moving in the right direction for us. So we've, we've been blessed to not have a ton of issues. Um, I'm sure everyone's aware that now there's going to be new procedures for anywhere where there's going to be um, patrons allowed to come into a store or building. That's going to start Sunday. I have been in contact with uh, like the Turkey Bills, all the, the, the quick shops. Um, we were store. I was in contact with them yesterday. We're working through a couple of issues they still have on the capacity of the store. So I did some math yesterday with Mike Weaver from Weaver, and I think we've agreed upon a total amount of people that will be allowed in that store at one time. They're doing everything they can do. They've been very good to work with. Um, you all know that we've got a large cache of goldfish. Um, hopefully you all get some of those. Uh, we still have lots left. Uh, they were they were donated by Pepperidge Farms to the township. We also took our first delivery of, from FEMA, FEMA of uh, some PPE for fire departments, police departments, and the, and the ambulance EMS service. So I've delivered those last week. Uh, no, I'm sorry, on Monday of this week to everybody. So I think our PPE situation in the township is good, but I've been in regular contact with Derek, with uh, Rick from REMS, from the other two fire chiefs in the township. And I think everything's going really smoothly for a situation that nobody's ever dealt with before and has no idea how to deal with it. So I think the, everything's moving forward just as, as smoothly as it can. Um, we do know Stevens is still serving meals. Um, that seems to be a large success, um, and I'm hoping it stays that way. I'm hoping we don't get any cases and, and nobody gets stroked through the month for that, but uh, that's, it's been a success for serving a substantial amount of people. So other than that, I think we're in great shape um, as a township as a whole, dealing with the pandemic part of it. Okay. Thanks a lot. We appreciate all you've done and your other fire chiefs and fire companies. Yes, well, th thank you, Scott. I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll let them all know. And, um, yeah, we're glad to do it. No problem. Okay.
For those that might be watching, Scott is our emergency coordinator here in the township and uh, puts a lot of time and effort into what he does and uh, basically as a volunteer effort. So we appreciate what you do, Scott. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, Scott, it's RC. Is there anything else on our end that you, I know you and many, of course, have been talking and talking, but is there anything else on our end where you might need help or anything like that, or you're pretty much good with, with everything you've got to support us? Yeah, I, I think our community has been, they've all stepped up to the plate. We've had lots of offers from businesses um, for a lot of different needs and issues in the township. So, you know, at some point, maybe the larger players, we could look at sending a thank you letter out from the township mm -hmm. um, to those businesses that have helped and provided just to know that they're not forgotten and that we do appreciate what they do mm -hmm. and we appreciate that they're in our township. Um, okay. So that would be one thing we could do. and. I don't think we've had any, unless, unless Derek has had, I don't think the emergency services have had much of a financial uh, impact from this whole thing. So unless we reach a point where we have a lot of financial impact, um, that would be the other thing that I would look for you to help with, and that would be to you know, secure that funding through FEMA and FEMA mm -hmm. to, to make sure that that's not coming out of the taxpayer's pocket at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Thank you. Otherwise, I think we're, we're in great shape, our okay. I'd like to find a follow-up, I think, uh, from Donnie Stover, the chief at Smokestown Fire Company. Uh, he just reported that not much is happening there and all their members are healthy. Likewise, he wants to give a big thank you to the community and the businesses for stepping up and donating food and products to the fire department and its members. Um, they, of course, have canceled many of their fundraisers, um, and likewise, they are also helping to deliver food with um, Stevens, so mm -hmm. things are going very well. So, uh, yeah, I just want to throw out my thank you there as well, Scott. You've uh, done a great job, and I appreciate all your daily communications. And we know... Yeah, and I, I, I might add from Reefstown also, Penny, if I could, that uh, from the Reefstown Fire Department side, We've had several businesses now that have, that, that have come to us and realized that we're going to be have a financial impact mm -hmm. canceling fundraisers. And, and we've gotten already two or three substantial donations back that we typically do not see that were all related to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I'm not saying by any means that we're financially stable, but mm -hmm. we've had some large donations from larger businesses. Mm -hmm to help us through this whole thing and offset some of the costs of losing our fundraisers. Awesome. I know also that Penny, if you need FEMA documentation, she's an expert in that. <laughs> yeah, she's been, she's been through that road before, so thanks a lot. Okay. Zoning officer. Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, you do have a copy of my report. I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, as usual, the zoning department is uh, consistently busy, but we had 25 new applications, 27 permits issued, 12 in review, 16 for pickup. We did have, we did have uh, in the previous month four new single-family dwelling units that were permitted. Uh, we had eight false alarm violations. I did have two uh, zoning hearing board hearings uh, for the month of March. Uh, Mr. Randall, uh, Randall Gockley was looking for a special exception for a home occupation. That decision was granted. And the second case was Chris and Melinda Loudenschlager were requesting a special exception to the echo housing uh, section in the ordinance. And that decision was granted. I do have two cases for April and one for March. And they have been postponed indefinitely because of the COVID-19 situation. Uh, just scrolling down, uh, we had one property in the township, 14 Ingham Drive, that had been uh, basically in limbo. The owners of the property had vacated. The current owner of the property, which is a financial institution, was not maintaining the property, finally reached out to them, got their uh, cooperation, and we have some people out there cleaning up that, or should have some people out there cleaning that property up, the exterior of it, uh, as we speak, uh, if not uh, already started. Um, one other thing that I do want to add, to my report, uh, this past week, 
I have uh, myself and uh, Chairman Fry in the office. I did reach out to several of our business owners in the township just to really uh, let them know that the township has always been open. We're here for them. If they have any questions or concerns, we'll be happy to jump in and help out. Uh, I called uh, approximately 17 different companies speaking with the owners and if there's anything that we can do. Most of them just appreciated that we acknowledge that they were there and, and they know they can contact us with any concerns. Uh, most of them are hanging in there. We do have a couple of businesses that are really hit hard by this. Uh, the, uh, the car sales uh, uh, sector of the township. We have uh, a new car dealer and we also have another car dealer with Press Motors. And they are not able to do any business at all, as you know, because of the governor's mandate. But they're hanging in there, and hopefully we can get their operations open and uh, selling vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's all up to the governor's office. Other than that, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you may have any. Any questions of the zoning officer? Mr. Fry, I do have one other thing. I just uh, looked at my list. Township officials last month conducted a meeting with uh, with the area, Cocalico farmers in the area over at Weaver's Banquet facility to discuss the current DEP and MS4 requirements mandated by the EPA. I will say that it was very well attended. A lot of good information. Mr. Ken McCray and Mr. Mitchell conducted the meeting there and uh, very, uh, very informative. Mm -hmm. Our farmers, are, some of them stepped up, they're eager to help out. Good. So I'm sure we'll continue that correspondence in the future. Okay, other than that, we'll thank Ken and Jeff? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm eager to touch base with Team Ag and uh, see, see if there's any follow through with them on uh, people that are putting any new plans together. Had you heard anything, Ken? Or uh, No, I haven't thus far. Yeah, I, I didn't reach out to them yet with everything else that's going on, but, but I will here in the near future. Mm -hmm. I'll copy the view on that. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Roadmaster. Morning. Yes. Morning, Chris. Uh, so far this month, we cautioned off the playground at Homestead twice. Probably do more if the winds keep blowing like they do. Uh, we took down the rims for what basketball events we could take down. And if we couldn't get the rim off, we took the whole backboard down. So there's some out there that don't even have backboards up. Uh, we hauled a, a load into the transfer station of recyclables, basically uh, the batteries and light bulbs and everything that Lisa collects here, we wind up getting out there. We took old paint, all kinds of stuff in, but uh, what happens is Lisa has her little bucket here of light bulbs, I take them back to the shed, and then once we have a, a truckload, we haul it in. Well, with all this new stuff with COVID and stuff, they unloaded the truck and they didn't give me my recycling bins back, so they, they basically swiped a bunch of our recycling bins. <laughs> so maybe we have the next time we need recycling bins, we tell them they give us some for free. Uh, we service the mower, since it's getting to be mowing season. Uh, we have one yard out there that we mow, basically it's their yard at the shed, so we, we had that up and running. I marked a bunch of trees to get quotes on. I'm still getting some quotes coming in. I gave you the the information there. I'll discuss that a little bit later. Uh, I did a little mini road tour with Supervisor Mitchell to discuss the roads, let him ask questions on what the roads, what we're looking at to have roads done and when we should have it done. I think we had a good productive talk. We actually ran into a citizen. I cannot remember where he was from, but he worked in the municipal field. So he, he knew right away that the questions that Mr. Mitchell was imposing, and, and he knew how to answer them, and, and it was nice. I mean, it was, Jeff was getting feedback from two people in the field instead of just me alone out there. Well, if I could interject, uh, yeah, it was by chance, uh, the, the gentleman I think was a former roadmaster from Upper Darby. I couldn't remember where. Yeah, it was down in Delaware County pretty far, and uh, uh, you know, it's always good to get feedback from the community when you're out there. And the gentleman lived in Rose Hill, and there we were, right there looking at the roads. And, uh, you know, we, we got uh, feedback from him. He was pleased with the roads that he saw. And uh, in, in light of the taxing situation that I guess we'll be discussing a little bit later on, he, was, he thought it was sufficient enough to hold off on doing anything on those roads uh, uh, at this time this year. 
Uh, obviously, they will. We have to be addressed in the future. But yeah, it was. Uh, well, I guess we talked to him for twenty minutes or more. Yes. It was. Uh, it was good interaction with the community. I thought. Now this this Monday, of course, we had a a good batch of rain. We. Uh, mm hmm. It's, it's an understatement. We, we had all, every flood sign we owned out. Mm -hmm. uh, we were putting signs up even where there were no creeks. Uh, at this point, we had probably four calls coming from Moons Hill. Well, everybody's home. They're, they're at home now during the day, and they saw what that storm did. So uh, there's, there's some issues up there. I basically have two guys together working on restoring them ditches. We had an embankment just give way and totally cover the one pipe entrance end. So all that water just hopped right over that and then it gutted out farther down the road. So, I mean, we're going to, hate to say it, but we're going to need to put some money into that and get some stones up there on them road edges because it's, it's a good drop off. You've got a, a good one foot drop off the edge of the road at some of them spots. What if if I could interject again, is that a, a place where maybe we need some engineering help about, uh, you know, future needs there? To, but, the, but, these storms just seem like we get 100-year storms every year now. And, yes. uh, if it's going to be a recurring problem, maybe we need to look at, you know, something more s substantial than what's there. What, what's your thoughts on that? I agree with you. Uh, I can say the spot though that basically really gutted. It was all due to that and bank, I mean the bank coming down and closing that pipe. What what gutted there, I, I mean, if that wouldn't have fell, it wouldn't have gutted the roof. Okay. So, but also with what you're saying there, yes, I did have a homeowner say something about us putting another pipe in. I said, well, we can't do that. Just come out and do it. I said, we need to get the engineers, the zoning officers, and everybody involved in that. And, and the, the gentleman actually has a, a pipe on his property already. It discharges onto his property. He has a nice swale. And it's in between his detached garage and his house. Well, his detached garage took a bunch of water from the water coming down the hill crossing the road prior to getting to that pipe even. So he said about putting a second pipe in up for it. Well, we could do that. It would discharge on his property, but at that point, we need him to, okay, yeah, here's what we can do. We can put the pipe in. You need to control the swale. You need to run a swale through your whole property. All of that stuff, which, yes, we need to have an engineer. We need to have coding. We need to have you guys all agree with to, to do something like that. I told him, knowing everything that's going on with COVID and our land planning engineer, I said it, it could be down the road a couple months until we actually do it, but we address the ditch works, trying to get the ditches open and the pipes. Uh, the guys were up yesterday, like I said, they, uh, they took care of most of the ditches. Now we're trying to remedy behind the pipes a little better, get more room in around the pipe entrance ends to, to be able to take more water in. So they're up there doing that. Of course, we got areas all through the township where this rain just silted in all our gutters. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the guys are going to be busy chasing after all the gutters, get the gutters open, get the pipes open. Uh, like I said, we're picking up, we'll start picking up some debris along the roads. Uh, North Muddy Creek Road, yeah. there's that little pipe crossing. Uh, we put, picked up a 10 foot tree. <laughs> it, it just flooded and it deposited it right along the road. So we, we have a bunch of stuff out there. Uh, when we came in Tuesday to actually start the cleanup process, we hooked the broom to the loader and the broom didn't work. Uh, called Stevenson Equipment, their tech guy said, hey, here, here are a few things you can look at. The simple things, to which we looked at, no, everything looked fine, so they sent up a repairman out. They're coming from Harrisburg, not knowing how long it would take till we actually would have a guy on site and the machine up and running. I went down to Eagle. Uh, I rented a, an angle broom for the skid loader. The broom we have for the skid loader basically just pushes forward. It cannot angle. So to clean the roads, you need to, to brush them off to the sides. So Eagle Rental has had a, an angle broom for $145 a day. I thought that was a good, good thing. That way we at least get the roads, get the roads starting to get swept clean. Uh, Stevenson had our loader up and running by lunchtime. 
And Stevenson also offered to pay our rental bill for, for that. The, their apologetic that the, the broom did not work when we needed it to work, and they said they would pick up the, the fee from Eagle Rental. I took a picture of the invoice and, and sent that off to them. I, I don't know if, if Penny wants to contact him later, or I, I don't know how that will work. Will he just automatically pay the bill, or will the bill come here? And you the bill will come here, and I will pay it. Okay. So if he and wants we'll to, he can reimburse the township. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will let him know that. When's the last time you used this broom? Was it recently, or? Uh, the broom would have got used probably in the fall of last year. Okay. And and that's the sad thing. I mean, we have no room to store stuff like that inside, where it's probably should have been kept. Because it basically was that the O-rings were bad in the cellul celluloids. Sol and solenoids? Solenoids. Yeah. Okay. So he actually replaced the O-rings and it still didn't work. So then he took the everything off again. And there's I guess balls in the tubing. The, the balls were froze fast. Or rusted fast. He once he popped them free, then the broom was good to go. I mean, we would have chased that forever. So we would have thought of something like that. So the room's up and running. They, like I said, they apologize for it not working. Uh, I do know with our small plots, the, anything with hydraulics and everything like that sitting outside, those motors can create an issue. So that's why we, whatever we can get into the building, be it the small plows, we, we keep inside. I guess now we're going to have to look at trying to find a space to, to get the broom under under roof and in warmth. Uh, the broom is also, that was purchased in 2003. So I mean that's, we had good good time. It, it's really in sad shape. It needs a little tender loving care. Like I say, I have, I have prices for you later in the report. Uh, right now we're out trying to, with two guys doing the ditch works, the, the other two are out taking care of signs. We had Two signs in the last two days come down. Mm -hmm. the, the wind has the ground, well the wind in the rain has the ground that soft, a little bit of wind knocks the sign over or breaks the bulls out. So mm -hmm. our latest victim was down here at the bottom of the hill road in Smokestown, a tractor trailer hit that one up. That ground, uh, Danny called me up before meeting and, and asked what to do. The ground is that soft. If we go to put the three foot base in, it's, it's not catching anything firm. So we're, we're going to try and figure out a way that we can rig it, that we can put this sign back into the yard farther away and hang like a mast arm out to mount the sign so the sign itself is in the position it needs to be, but the pole is in on solid ground. So we're going to have to do a little engineering to try and figure out how to make this work. That's the stop sign for Hill Road? Yes. Yeah, that, that is a, a swamp right there. And it, it's hard to address that. You're having all the water coming down off the hill road going right through that where the sign sits. Yeah. Now, we still have a few roads to, to get to to finish cleaning them all. But between that, between the storm and just taking care of other stuff, we've been fairly busy. Uh, to go to the sheet that I gave you guys for the, the tree trimming, or not the tree trimming, but taking down the trees. So far I've gotten three prices. I just had one prior to the meeting starting. Uh, you have a price from the Calico Tree Service for taking down that liability tree, and you also have a price from Martins and Premier for taking down that tree that's a liability issue. So far Martins is your cheapest price. Both the Calico Tree Service and Premier have given a price that are the same for that liability tree. Uh, that's something we cannot push. I mean, uh, Mr. Mitchell thought that we could push, use the loader and push in that. If it's not a tall tree, it, it wouldn't be an issue. But considering this tree is actually extremely tall and it has a split in it to put the loader up against that tree, you know, you're taking the driver of the loader in hazard, you're putting the loader itself in a hazard. If that tree splits, 
Then you have the wire issue. I mean, all of how that wire comes, I mean, that tree falls, you, you take out the wires. And, and who knows what damage you'll have to the loader. So that one actually has to be cut. I, I agree with you. Uh, that is at least 50 foot tall and it's tangled in the top with uh, another. another tree. And that's, even uh, the last call I had was Premier, and, and he is, he, he's a good tree service. He's, he was hesitant. His price there, you see, is, uh, well, you don't see it. It was 450, which is the same as what Calico is. Uh, it's it's going to require some roping and everything else to secure that top because you don't know where it's going to go once you cut it free. Or even start to try and trim something off since it's tangled into another tree. Uh, Looks like Jeff Martin from Martin Tree Service wasn't too concerned about that. That's, yes, that's the scary part. I mean, well, he, he put his name on it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't have a written quote from Premier. It was basically on a text message. He, uh, he only got out this morning to look at it. And I said, hey, I'm in a meeting from 9 o'clock till who knows when. I said, if you get there, you just send me a text of what your prices would be, and I'll relay it to you guys. So his price was 450 Martin's is 2 and the, the Calico tree was 450 also. Now for the... A, a question for you there uh, associated to that one specific tree. Uh, at what point is that a communication issue? It's, there's no electric there on those wires. It's communication cables only. Uh, has, has it ever been the case where you call Windstream or whoever's uh, responsible for, for the cables and say, hey, you have a tree leaning against your cables? The, I think the uh, police... Maybe you should take care of it. I think the police make them calls for us. Uh, and, yeah, the, unless that tree falls down and takes them wires down, the cable and the phone don't care. Because that, that one tree on Dogwood has been leaning against the wires, oh, at least 10, 10, 12 years. And it's been stretching on them, and, and until the tree actually falls, they don't care. Maybe that's why our internet is it's a little sparse at times. <laughs> it could be. If the wind's blowing the tree and the tree's shaking the wires, it could be that reason. Could be. Could be. Well, I, I, I think, just, just to kind of terminate that, that idea a little bit, I think that tree, you know, is a definite problem. It should be taken out, you know, right away. If Martin Tree Service is looking at... 200 bucks to do that and that's basically just to drop it on the road and you clean it up yeah they would basically take that top down they get that the dangerous parts down on the road to the point where they can actually just then go behind the tree cut it and let it fall into the woods we would clean up the road we would also be out there with them having the road closed mm -hmm. it, it's my thought that we ought to just authorize that and move ahead with it okay. what are your thoughts mr fry Sounds good to me. The, the only thing with that is I don't know how soon they can be there. Well, if it's lasted 10 years, maybe it can last another month or so. Yeah. Well, <laughs> would, would be the thought. That's, that split only occurred from the storm this weekend. Okay. The wind. Yes. Okay. Which, which created, like I said, I don't know how soon Martin can, but I did, I did get somewhat of a comment from both Premier and Calico that if, if we can give them notice, say after this meeting, they could probably be out there tomorrow. But I don't know, if you look at the weather forecast, it's not going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. No, no. I, so I, uh, I've wor worked with Martins in the past and they, uh, they've been rather responsive and real good to work with. So, I mean, by next week it should be down, whoever you want to go with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts, RC? I think um, I'm in agreement with you guys. I think that thing needs to come down. Mm -hmm. The photos that Chris sent over. Mm -hmm. um, we get another good windstorm like we saw Monday. It's probably going to take those lines out. I don't know if those are common lines or 120 or 240 that's running through there. It's just it's just communication. Communications. Windstream. It is common lines. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I, I think we need to get that done. I really do. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it's in a little bit of a protected area. There's a lot of other large trees around it, so it's not sitting out on its own where it's uh, subject to a lot of, you know, wind, direct wind coverage and down in a hollow there. So I, I'm not 
who knows what will happen, but I'm not uh, very uh, alarmed at all by that. I think we got a week or two. Okay. So I, I, I'm ready to authorize it. We need a motion. Yes, we do need a motion. Need a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll make that motion uh, that we award uh, Martin Tree Service uh, the bid for $200 to take down the so designated tree on Dogwood Drive. I'll second it. Any comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. No. Opposed no. Motion carried. Thank you. Good. All right, I'll contact them after meeting and let them know. Now, does. We, we talked about closing the road there, I guess, to do that. Is, do you see any issues there, Chief, on, on that part of Dogwood? Or? No, we should be fine. Maybe you can just alert emergency services. I, I, anytime we close the road, I, I basically call county. Yep. I let Heather know downstairs, and, and then I call county and let county know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even when we're doing pipes or something, I, I usually contact everybody on that. Good. Good. If, if, if you want, Basically, uh, the other three trees that were left there that I, that I marked off, you, know, you saw prices for Cacalica Tree Service, you saw a price for Martin Tree Service, both of them are at a, a thousand twenty-five, and the other one's at a thousand fifty. Uh, and then you have a price also for the tree on Hill Road. I have a quote here from, well, and like I say, it's a text quote, it's not an official quote. But Premier just came back with a text saying that he would take all those trees on Dogwood and the tree on Hill Road down for $1,100. If we're out there for traffic control and cleanup. Well, we already authorized taking the one down, he's talking about all of them. <laughs> well, that, that one's that priority. I mean, that one. That, that's a liability to you. The other trees are standing and they're healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would the 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 other one on Dogwood uh, that you so the other that, one. One's, that one's not very healthy, but it's standing by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something you think you could give a push to, or you scared that? Yeah. That? No, that one that one doesn't have the height. Right. I mean that that's the scary part when you get something that's dead that has a lot of height. Where is it going to fall? I mean, will it stay intact until it falls over, or will it break and then whoever's on the ground is in trouble? I agree. you, you got to understand, though, sometimes farmers are adventurers at heart. Well, the great thing is, though, it's... <laughs> the great thing but but that we do that on our own property, not on exactly. the ground. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> you're on your own property. I, I get you. And that's, I mean... Uh, when we first discussed what you thought the price might be, well, if you think about it, yeah, you're you're dropping something like that on your your own ground, and that's the same as the the, the park when he did Stony Point. He he did all of those trees for that price, but he didn't have to delim anything. Yeah. Where all of these trees along the road, they have to delim that so they can get that thing to fall because they want it to fall and totally reach the ground. If they don't delim it, that thing gets caught up. Well, then then you just really created a problem. Well, I, I don't see the sense of urgency there with oh, the other two. And, exactly. Uh, you know, I'm, maybe at some point the tree business gets really slow and somebody's more aggressive for work and will give a better price. That that would be my thought of how to proceed they, there. They are all busy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right now. And that was the thing, I mean... Some of the prices, I mean, like you said, Martin's is 200 well, Maybe Martin actually doesn't have anything this week. But I know the other guys said they would have to jockey their schedules around to, to come down there just to take that one tree that is a liability. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, maybe, like you say, in a little slower time, mm -hmm. maybe you, you get a lot tighter pricing on. That would be my thought. I don't know what you guys okay. think. Uh... Okay. Okay, and then... Uh, the last thing I had there that I gave you was prices for the, the broom itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot tell you the last time uh, the wheels were purchased, the potty wheels and the water wheels. I did find something that Larry Paul, I think, ordered those wheels from ODB in 2008. 
and the prices haven't really changed drastically. In 2008, the, the poly wheel itself for, in 2008 cost $6.90 each, where now the poly wheel, I don't have it with me, I think it's $7.50. Yeah, really, yeah. So, I mean, that's the, the change since 2008 for the poly wheel now. That broom has 27 poly wheels and 27 wire wheels on it. I did start digging through all the, the business cards and everything else of all our suppliers. If, if you want me to get prices from everybody. No, this is a small amount. So, mm -hmm. no, that's not necessary. Where, do, where does that come from? Is it out of the area pretty far? Or I noticed there's a, there's a big freight bill on that. That, normally what happened is they delivered this giant box out here to the office. And the, the freight bill is for them to bring it to our shed in a small truck. And I think they wrote on there, they actually don't have a set price on the freight. They, they put in there as a guesstimate on what that price would be. No. Uh, that's what I mean. If, if I don't know if, if, if I contacted somebody else, will we get freight coming at a cheaper price? I, I don't know. Well, are, are they close by? Are they uh, far I, I actually don't know where ODB is from. Okay. Curious after a while, 20% uh, of the bill is freight. Exactly. And, uh, you know. I, I mean, uh, the other one I, I contacted was, I don't know if I could pronounce their name right, LACAL, L A C A L, to which I will be talking to them later today on the price. So, uh, they, have, they said they have it in stock, but there again, I don't know where they're out of either. They, they, they furnish all 50 states, he said, and uh, the information I gave to the guy, he needed more information than I had at the time, so I have to, to dig up a little more on the, the broom itself, on the, on the wheels, the poly wheels and stuff, to get them better information on it. They're all working from home. Now, almost everybody I talk to is, so it's, it's basically I call them up, they take down, and they call their offices and try and find out what they have in stock and everything else. Yeah, I, I guess it's my guess, and maybe it is yours too. That there isn't a whole lot of deviation here in price. It's I don't you know, think it might so. be twenty five cents a piece difference or something, but it's not a uh, a large amount. And then, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure we bought all those poly and wire wheels since two thousand and eight. I mean, those you, you can get. You can burn that wheel up in a year if we're out busy sweeping. So I'm thinking 2008 was the last one that was actually recorded in the book by Larry Paul. I'm pretty sure we made a purchase since then because I know we've changed those those brushes when they wore out probably three times. Was was this something that you knew you know last fall we needed to get these brushes or is this was just uh, discovered lately or how is that? I thought we had a whole supply of brushes yet, okay. and, and when I went up to look, we, we don't. Sounds like it would have been a good winter project where it was a rainy day it, having this in there and, and putting it together. It would have been. And then uh, having it, you know, put on there and trying it out and we'd have been ready to go one day. But it's, I mean, it's, it, it comes down to how much you're using the broom. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you use it. one year you might not even use it. Mm -hmm. the, the next year you might have it out. All, it's all in the storms and, and what happens that the broom gets used. And like I say, I apologize, but I thought we had a whole container of br bristles and we don't. Okay. All right. Well, is it, is it usable now at the, the current stage? We, we can or? still. We can still Barely. sweep, yeah, because what happens is you put the machine in jeopardy. Well, not the machine, but basically the rope, because he's got he's to try and angle that to get the broom down there just perfect, otherwise the machine will start driving into the rope, and then, then you're creating mm -hmm. Then you're creating another issue then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's, I mean, we, we could possibly, if, if something were to happen today or tomorrow or something else, uh, we'd still be able to take that broom out. And the one on the skid loader, you can't angle it, so that's really not no, no help. That's, that's, that's great for 
uh, the broom we purchased is great for what we, we purchased it for. We, we purchased that for when we go out and do patchwork. The, this thing picks it up, it has a bucket, and it brooms itself into the bucket. So it's basically a direct, where it's going is where it's brooming it to. It can't blow the stuff off the road unless he's going across the road from side to side, which that's sort of a hazard. So it's sweep and catch at the same time. It is. The one we have for the skid loader, uh, maybe that's an idea down the road. And I don't know how much one of those attachments would cost to, to put an angle attachment on the skid loader too. The only, the only problem with the skid loader is you're going to have to trailer that thing. Where the, to have the broom for the loader, the loader can get around on its own. Yeah. Where the skid loader, well, if you're going from one end of the township to the other, you can't dry that there. Right. Okay. All right. Do you do you want to uh, an authorization to get the these broom parts set? If you want. Or, yeah. It's five hundred fifty six dollars and thirty eight cents for fifty four. I guess you heard the conversation, RC. Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts? No, I heard it. Yeah. Are you ready? To, uh, we got a bill of roughly five hundred and fifty dollars to get the parts, with a you know one hundred and ten dollars of it being free, and that's just a guesstimate. Says so it's not a, it's not definitive. Are you? Do you want to move ahead with that, or what are your thoughts? I, I think we should move ahead. With it. She's going to need those. She's going to need those brushes. You know, mm -hmm. you go ahead and move the tool in because it. It's the tool they're going to need, right, Chris? It's the tool you're going to need? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was a yes. Yeah, I... I'm going to make a motion. You can, like I said, it, it is well under the threshold. Um, I think a verbal yeah. is fine. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do. Harry, what's that? I just said that this is such a small amount, it's well under the threshold, you know, I don't know if formal motion is needed, if they just wanted to give a verbal approval, I thought that was fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm all right with verbal. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You're good too? Marcy? Yeah. Okay. 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 You're good on that. That's all project fun. discussion. Okay. We're, are you done your report or is there more yet? I'm done with my report. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a road project discussion on the uh, agenda. And I guess we're looking uh, for a port report here. Uh, do you want to know more, RC, or uh, about Chris and my uh, adventure? Um, no. I'm pretty well caught up on it, unless any data changed from when we last talked. No, I, I had a first-hand view of the projects that are on the agenda for this year, and, uh, um, you know, there's there's places that uh, I think Chris pointed out have, have a definite need for attention this year. I don't think we can uh, look at putting them off, and then there's other places that in Rose Hill where uh, the homeowner came out and we, we looked at it and he thought we could definitely uh, wait. Uh, with the tenuous taxing situation we have in front of us, uh, I think uh, you know, it would be smart to, to push some of this down the road. Uh, you know, I did ask Chris uh, you know, to prioritize a little bit what he thought was needed for, for this year. And, uh, do you do you have more thoughts uh, for that, Chris? Or I, I agree that we could we could postpone Rose Hill. We we should get into Heatherwoods. Uh, that one, or, or not Heatherwoods. I'm sorry, Homestead's development. Mm -hmm. uh, that has more damage done to it, and uh, the longer that goes, the more your price is going to increase. Uh, so if we had to strike a road off of our bid packet, I would, well not a road, but a development, I would strike Rose Hill for this year. Uh, that would drop you, it was, I don't have the price with me, it was 200 and 
forty. I'm guessing two hundred forty thousand for that development for sale. So that would take that out. Uh, I did contact and talk to New Enterprise, and I did send an email to the board and Penny and you guys that we should reward our bidding then, because what happens is when we put the bids out like that, they're looking at the mats and they're getting prices for all the work on that bid. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to change it, that we're going to drop one, then we need to have them basically as an ad alternate, which means then they're pricing them as individuals, which is means your price will go up, but they're pricing it strictly for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Chris, that's a good point, because the one thing we're going to have to balance here, Jeff, is um, I think Rose Hill, when we have looked at it in the past, and Alan can remind me, I think that one was one where it was more, it was getting close to where if we waited longer and longer, the cost to then do that development was going to go up substantially, right? So we may still be okay postponing that 12, 14 months. Mm -hmm. However, um, there's a couple of things we need to balance here. Um, Chris, has, Chris just said one of them, one of the key things that I've been wondering in my mind is when this goes out on 10 bids, uh, are they packaging them, because, let's call it volume pricing, right? Are they doing volume pricing, Chris, because of those developments? And then what's the impact on Homestead if they only do Homestead separately? I, I'm not sure what the fluctuation in that pricing is, or cost to us is going to be. Yeah, I, I can't tell you what the price increase would be for them to break it down. I can tell you that I did hear uh, Roadmaster did open his bids, and he was flabbergasted. He hadn't seen prices that low in a long time. Well, yeah, that's right. The oil prices are way down. Your, your, your oil prices are way down. Mm -hmm. Plus, right. Plus, you have PennDOT actually kicking the can on a lot of their projects, which means these guys are going to be looking for work, and they might be doing the cutthroat. Yeah, and, so there, and, and you're making another point that we need to seriously think about is with COVID-19 and a lot of these projects on hold, it, it, between the actual plants and the contractors, they're going to be looking just to do work. So the question becomes, it's a difficult balance, knowing, you know, the, the tax, not knowing what the tax implications are, versus yes. are we getting pricing and can we get such aggressive pricing, you do them both anyway? It, 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 I don't have enough data to make that decision yet is what I'm saying. It's just those are the things that I'm kind of mulling in my head. So that that cost-benefit analysis. Is, is, let me just, uh, just as an idea, let me throw this out there. Is it something where you can put uh, two separate bid packages yeah. together, one with like one development, one with both developments. That would that would be and, doing that would be just doing the ad well. Yeah. Can I interject here? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. So how how the bid practice works is we put out the bid and we did not specifically ask them to break it down by roads or by sections. So they are going to they are bidding as Chris said in a bulk bulk package which I'm sure we're going to get a better price. So if we alter this, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and actually redo all of their thing, which is going to delay everything by quite a while. So that's one thing to look at. The second thing is we do have our liquid fuels money, and that's what we're going to be basing this off. Um, I would keep our spending within what we have in liquid fuels. I would not spend any general fund money. Where it's really going to come into play is next year for our liquid fuels money. Because people are not out there about, they're not buying the gas, we're not getting the road taxes, so that's going to affect our income that will be coming in at the end of this year. So that's really what's going to be affected. Um, so like I said, if you decide to go just do certain roads, we're going to have to almost rebid, um, and that's going to delay things. Or you can get all the bids in, really examine them, and then just pick and choose. But, you know, you're going to get sick of me hearing me say this this year, but we really got to do our due diligence this year 
and being very selective on our spending because our income is going to take a, a drastic hit. So. Do, do they mind when you pick, pick and choose like that once you have a bid, or do you hear grumbling? Uh, it's like, well, wait a minute. That's they not they what don't. They, for. Uh, speaking with some of the, the, the contractors, they, they understand what, what's happening right there for this year. Uh, the, the easiest way is, is like I said, uh, actually, uh, New Enterprise said what we should do is just go into pen bids and simply state, break those two developments apart, put an as alternate in there for the one development. That way you're getting a price for the one. Here's the other one that's up there, but it's an alternate. It means it might not get done, or it might get done, all of what the pricing comes in at. There a contractor can say, well, hey, if, if he really shaves it close, he'll give a price decent for both of them, hoping that the township will say, hey, yeah, we can afford both of these at that point and do them both. Or he knows that, hey, they might not. Here's my great ballpark price for this one. This one here is going higher. And, and that's a practice you really want to do from, from this point on, yep. is, kind of, is, is have your bid package where it is broken out into different sections in the event that you ever have to eliminate a section. Mm -hmm. it, it brings another uh, item to light there as well in Old Homestead. There's a couple of those internal roads, and we, we talked about that, Chris, while we were out. Uh, I think buckwheat and cowpath, they're just internal roads throughout the development uh, where there's large stretches of road with no crack in it whatsoever. Uh, they have minimal traffic, it appears, and uh, they, they don't really have the need for the, uh, the expensive overlay that we're talking about. Uh, is it something we want to look at maybe uh, picking and choosing in that development a little bit to uh, to save some bid, I think it's a little foolhardy to, when you have a road with no cracks in it whatsoever, to put overlay on it when there's other places that could need it. Um, you have any input on that, Chris? I'd say you'd get a lot of kickback from your residents. Yeah, you're going to have, if you're in a development and you do one road, it, and you pay just one road in that development, and you do another process such as oil and chip or something else, you, you're going to get kicked back from the residents on that saying, well, you paid his road, why didn't you pay mine? That's true, you will get kicked back, but, but I, will, I, I welcome that kickback. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to will. address that. Uh, I, would say, I would yeah. say in the future, yeah. like with Jeff and I out and about, we were discussing doing that procedure from the future on, we can do it that way. Uh, Seeing some of the prices that we were getting quote-wise for the upcoming developments that we still have to do, uh, we wouldn't have the money. We, we wouldn't even have enough liquid fuels to take care of the next development that would be on the list, which would have been Ringstown Heights down there, which is at Nancy Hamill's district office. Our liquid fuels wouldn't even cover that, to have that paid. So that would be one possibility. We, we piecemeal. We either do sections of it, or we do an overlay on this one road that is the worst road, which is going to require some milling to it because it's totally shot. And, and we can inform the residents, sort of, sort of like when we did a Quail Hollow where we went in with the oil and chip truck. Uh, basically, it's just being able to inform the residents of, hey, this is what we're doing. This is because of the cost of this stuff. And, and then the residents know. I, I don't know if it would be ideal to maybe surprise the residents this year, knowing that, hey, th these roads were going to get paved. Well, I, I don't look at that as being a problem. I, I see, okay. you know, we're in an emergency fine. situation in the county, township, state, and country. Everybody's got to know that we're, we're in, it's a different world now, and, you know, you can't, can't everybody can't have a new blacktop. It's just not, not an option. And, and that's fine, but like I said, we, we had the development itself. You know, I mean, you're, you're looking at going into Homestead now to pay that, and you're looking at paving that entire development, to which that is what you're getting your bid for, for them paving that entire development. I don't know how that's going to swing if you say, hey, you're only going to pay this road in this development, and then we're not doing the rest. I mean, there you just totally change numbers. Like I say, for, for the years coming forward now, if we want to do that, that's fine, and we can bid it that way. And I'm, I'm, 
I like that idea if that's the way you want to go. I mean, in the long run, the people are going to come to me and they might complain, but I'm going to tell them, hey, 